this is a very important thing that I can ever share with you guys, uh, since I've seen a lot of you guys are uh, traders in volatility indices. So without wasting much time, uh, we're gonna look at the advantages. The advantages of um, trading synthetic indices are, one, as you know, that Deriv is uh, open 24 seven, unlike the Forex market, which is open for four hours, five days. Then uh, the beneficiaries of these uh, trading indices are technicians. Technicians by technicians, I mean those who uh, just like studying technical analysis, those who don't want to touch the fundamental aspect because indices are not affected by the fundamental aspect. You can easily make a quick pack. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You can make a quick back within a shortest period of time. You can give an example like the way you trade boom and crash. Yeah, even the same volatility indices. Then they uh the low margin requirements. You can deposit as low as ten dollars. Yeah, trading trading uh, using the rib. You can deposit as low as ten dollars. Then there's no verification required for you to trade, which is true. Then the good thing is that it has good market structure and. Uh, this is where our strategy lies on, on uh, the good market structure of these indices. So I want you guys to focus more on this market structure. All these, yes, there are, benef there are benefits of uh, trading the indices, but market structure, that's where our strategy lies on. So the disadvantages of trading uh, synthetic indices are, let's say, uh, one, due to their nature as synthetic indices due to their nature as synthetic indices they're easily manipulated easily manipulated by the broker they're easily manipulated by the broker then it's true that you can make uh, some quick money but you can easily blow an account with these things so the first thing uh, that i want to place emphasis on is that you need to observe that uh, like i said that indices have got good market structure you need to observe that most of these indices or uh, not, not most of them but i would say like yeah most of them excluding let's say uh things like range break and other things they move in these they're characterized by higher highs and higher lows. They are what we call channels. They are ascending channels and they are descending channels. So these channels, I don't want you guys to be really much focused on the names, whether it's ascending or descending, but what I just want you to focus on is what these channels are characterized. Because if you master market structure, it's gonna be easy for you to trade other than focusing on these names. So let's say ascending channels, this is when we are in an uptrend, where it's characterized by higher highs and higher lows. So what you need to do or how to draw these channels is by simply connecting highs and lows to create an ascending channel. The same with descending channels. These are characterized by lower highs and lower lows. So to create uh, a descending channel, you need to create or connect lower lows and higher highs. So that's why I was telling you guys in the groups that if you need to understand what I'm going to teach you today, you need to refer to the YouTube channel. Uh, to the YouTube channel, I uploaded a video about uh, the basic understanding of market structure. So the reason why you need to consider drawing channels is these will act as guides to areas where market can potentially create a high or low. This is more like a traffic light when you're driving. So I hope uh, everything is clear by now. Let me, so, so due to good market structure of synthetic indices, it's easy to draw these channels. Like I said that the, the uh the indices like i said the indices have got good market structure which makes it easier for us to draw these channels so 
let's say I'll show you an example of show you examples of descending channel as you can see like i said that indices have got this character of moving in channels descending and ascending channels the clear i see here it's a nice descending channel all you need to do is connecting two points the first two points which are mostly uh, at the tips of the candlesticks which are wicks connect them from here you can clearly see how price was moving within this channel. Same thing here, you would have connected below here. Look for two points that stand out. Connect there, you connect there. You can clearly see how price was bouncing within the channel. The same thing here, another descending channel. You can see how price was bouncing in between. So it's very vital when you're trading indices to connect these points to make uh, these ascending and descending channels. These are the characteristics of, uh, of indices. They like moving in channels because of their good market structure. So here you can clearly see that, like I said, that these act like guides, the ascending and descending channels. You can clearly see now, like you can notice what happens after the price breaks through the channel when price breaks through the channel you look for um you look for a change of market direction obviously you have to put other things into uh, consideration you can't just rely on a break of this channel you have to put everything which will learn with time yeah so as you can see here, what I just want to place emphasis here right now is that you can clearly see how indices like moving in channels, ascending and descending channel. So, <clears throat> yeah, so these are some of the things that you really need to consider. Here, you can see that this is an ascending channel, which is also a bear flag, since it's more like a continuation pattern. The only things that you just need to do is connect structural points lows highs lows highs look at what happened when price broke through this channel it went it continued so it's very important that you guys also refer to the video that was uploaded on the channel about market structure the reason why most people say that uh, these things don't work is they don't know how to draw them properly as long as you are able to connect the structural points you're able to identify swing points it's very easy for you to draw these things you can see here bear flag or a mini ascending channel you can see how price was was contained in this channel same thing here the bull flag which is more like a descending channel then plus other confluence like i said since the last time when i was hosting this uh, type of class there's a person who actually asked me when do you know uh, how to enter a bull flag or bear flag you can clearly see here there's a demand zone there you, you couldn't have entered here in between this because you know that there's a demand zone down there you could have waited for price to reach your demand zone that's when you would have taken your entry yeah, so it's very important that you use other confluence guys not just entering blind you understand everything so this first part of this slide is i'm just showing you how you can draw uh the descending and ascending channels like the very most important thing about these trading indices you need to put this into consideration guys so <clears throat> the next thing is we're going to look at support and resistance though most people overlook uh this uh simple concept support and resistance as you can see these are areas that prevent price from further declining in a downtrend. They are what we call flaws of the charts. So buyers patiently wait for price to reach these areas to buy at a discounted price. They will also have resistance. Resistance, these are areas that prevent price from rallying further in an uptrend. 
So they are what we call ceilings of the charts. So sellers patiently wait for price to reach these areas to sell at a premium price. So how do you draw them? I already explained in the video that I uploaded on the channel. First, you need to consider a line chart for you to draw these areas of support and resistance. As you can clearly see here, I drew my level of resistance here and look at how price was respecting in these areas. Look at how price was respecting these areas. So the very most important thing is these areas that I've told you, the where price touches the channel, the upper part and the lower part, or the resistance or the support. One thing that you need to pay much uh, close attention to this is how price reacts to the levels. Most of these points, as you can see, there are rejections, there are engulfing patterns, there are tweezer tops, tweezer bottoms, all of these. You can clearly see what happens here. If you don't know about the candlestick patterns, you can text me after this and I'll send you a book that explains about these candlestick patterns. I think I already sent these books in the groups. The very most important thing is for you to confirm that the level has worked or not. Look at how price reacts on this level. You can see an evening star here. You can see here there's a rejection here. There are rejection. But what I just want you to know is that you don't really need to know these names. The only thing that you need to know is the psychology behind the formation of a specific candlestick pattern. Don't stress out in knowing that this has formed there because i've seen most of the people let's say trying to justify their entries they'll say no i saw a morning star what no don't <clears throat> don't be there to be a cheaper in the market where you study and try to try to complicate things know the psychology behind a specific candlestick pattern don't just know the name for the sake of that if this happens this happens know the psychology behind it that's the very most important thing then you can see the line chart you can see the line chart this is support now this is support and this is a line chart see price how price was directing this level this is the same line chart but a candlestick format see what happens look at how price has been reacting on these levels on these levels rejections 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 and you can see different types of candlestick patterns that you can ever study there's a harami there you can see here there's an engulfing pattern make sure that you sharpen your eyes to see the type of candles that are forming on your air don't enter blindly guys don't enter blind that's why i'm saying that you have to use confluence for you to enter a trade you draw your support the resistance now look at what is happening what is price doing there okay that's how we would do this all of this goes back to the point of market structure the video that i uploaded on the channel then the next thing is you see support and resistance look at how price respects these areas look at how price respects these areas so let's give an example if you want to know how to draw a support or resistance level, let's say if you see here, this was <clears throat> this was the highest point. This was the highest point. Um, this was the highest point price reached here. Okay, let's give an example here. This resistance that was drawn here. That was the highest point price reached there. So. Let's see, where's my case? Yeah, this is the highest point price reached before price fell to the downside. Yeah? This is the highest point. So what you do is, next time when price comes to that point, draw a line on that, uh, the last up candle, which is the bull candle there, you draw a line at that point. Let me just put a small drawing there. You put a line there. You put this line on this candle close, which is the up candle. 
Then what you do is you observe if you see that next time price comes to this point, you see if there is any candlestick that will close above this resistance. All this is going to be cut at what happened here in the next slide. You see, you have to observe if price is going to close, going to close above this area. You see what happened? It tried to close above, but price came back into this area. Price came back into this area. See what happened? And it went down. Same thing with here. If we extend this area of support here, if we extend this area of support there, if we extend this area of support there, this was the last bear candle. And if you extend it, you can clearly see that there wasn't any candlestick that closed below this close of this candle, this bear candle, which created our level of support. Yeah, so these are very important, guys, very important, very important points. Then <clears throat> let's see. See the same thing. So all this support, support, resistance, resistance, resistance. You see, then they also the very most important thing again is um, the trend lines. Also draw trend lines, guys. Trend lines are very important. So drawing trend lines is also an effective way to trade the synthetic indices. Trend lines, when drawn correctly, can make you a can make you enter a trade accurately. So draw trend lines by connecting two points or weeks. Like I told you when drawing the channels, two weeks. The first two weeks, then you extend the line. Then trend, trend lines are effective when you connect structural points. Like I said, let's give an example. Let's say in an uptrend, connect higher lows, higher lows, connect them. Then in a downtrend, connect lower highs. Once there's a break of a trend line, it should give you a sign that there is a possibility that markets are about to change direction. Use other confluences, like I said, use other confluences to enter a trade. Don't enter a trade based on one thing. So um, let's see, let me show you an example. This is an example. You can play I see here. This is an example of step index. I connected this point here. And you can see here, I connected the second point. Connected the second point at that point. Uh, let's see. This point here, this was my first point here. The next thing that I saw was, I saw that structure was broken here. This last lower high was broken. Okay, this last lower high was broken by this point here. Then what happened next? A higher low was created, which connected my, my trend line. You see, simple as that. The same structural things that I was explaining, that I was explaining in the in the video on the YouTube channel. Simple as that. You see, so if drawn correctly, you can see that you can enter a trade nicely. You can enter a trade without any problem. You see, there I connected. There I connected. So these two became my first reference point. So the next time price comes to this trend line, I know that I've connected it using the structural points. So if I see any price action showing me signs of buying, I buy. I definitely buy. Because I've already made clear confirmation that I've connected two structural points. And I know that when price comes to this point, if I see price action under the confluence, I enter a trade. That's it. Yeah, so let's say more examples. You can see a break of a trend line. You see? You can clearly see here I drew one, two. You see? Very effective because this was a structural point. 
you see structural point there and you see it went there high high or oh, higher low uh higher high higher low higher high higher high then there was a break of the trend line you see what happened after the trend line was broken it came to retest the trend line simple as that you would have entered here upon confirmation of price action see what happened price fell very easy concepts guys don't complicate trading complicate if you find yourself stressing while trading then you are doing it wrong you can see here you can see here i connected here because this was a structural point this is also a structural point you can see here there then from here there what happened next you see price just dropped breaking this area here you see you would have entered at this point here because as you can see this was a high low high high we are supposed to have a what a high low at this point then we're supposed to have a what a high high there but it was missing because of all points back to the structural points very important guys then um let's give an example here you see you see at this point here uh, i drew this point here you see one two you see these are structural points very effective when you connect structural points don't draw anyhow then here you see price created a resistance there simple as that and as as like i showed like i told you at uh how to draw resistance this was the last up candle before price dropped look at price never closed above this point and you see when price closed above this point it came back to this range and went down so very important trend line resistance break of the trend line would have entered here consecutively at this point here if you didn't want to enter at this point, you have entered at this point here on the retest. Then there, is, there are also zones. Since I've talked about trend lines, ascending channels, now we um, want to talk about zones. So synthetic indices tend to respect zones more often. When drawn properly, you can make some good gains from trades that are at zones. So zones can. The reason why it's important to draw zones is that they can prevent you from being a victim of manipulation, manipulation or stop hand. So there's someone who asked me, uh, why does manipulation happen? Manipulation happens because like here in this case, let's give an example, this, these are synthetic indexes. We can't really say that it's the big boys, but in this case, we're gonna say that these are brokers. Brokers actually know how we human feel these are also humans so let's give an example when you're trading let's say boom and crash right you're anticipating a, a spike you see that most of the times when you're anticipating a spike you see that they will push it a little bit more than your level then what happens next price immediately you come out in a loss they spike it it's because they know where your stop loss your stop losses are your buy stops are your sell stops are they know exactly where, but if we push it a bit on this zone we're going to activate stops we're going to activate and uh, buy stops sell stops taking out liquidity so let's give an example here let's give an example here at this point you can see these are zones look at how price spikes in these areas look at how price spikes it's the same thing that i was showing you in in uh when drawing uh resistance there whereby you draw at the candle close let's say here at the candle close here but look at how price was pushed above this area here and look at what happened price just dropped back in this area that's it manipulation all of this manipulation so these are the this is the importance of zones 
Because if you just draw one line, you're going to be a victim of this. You're going to be a victim of this. So it's very important that you combine the line, which is drawn on the candle close. You also include the zone. As you can see here, there's also supply, supply and demand here. The zones are supply and demand. So as you can see here, this is a this is the area of supply. Look at what happened. If you drew just I drew this line on purpose. If you just drew this line, it would have been stopped because look at how price was pushed above. But if you see, I drew a zone, the price was contained within this area. You don't have fallen for manipulation. It's the same thing here. This is the area of demand. See what happened? Price came and went, just like that. So it's very important you include all of these. Let's see. Um, let's see another example. See here, this is this is an example of uh, this is an example of let's say this is an example of uh, of a trend line and supply. This structure, even here, we're about to touch, but in clear, see we didn't touch that much. Break of trend line we would have included uh, since most of the people would like to join let's say would like to for price to retest actually this trend line but as you can see price never made it to this trend line it only came to test the level of supply here so it's very important like i said that you include all the things all the things together you can't just use one thing you see because if you had waited for price to come to retest your trend line, you can clearly see that price never made it to the trend line. It only came to this supply. So you have to be very sharp when incorporating all of these. See, look at how price spikes in the zone. Look at, just look at. Just look at here. When, when we draw this point here, look at how, how stop hat is. Look at all of these. Very interesting. So, so uh, how can we stop? Let's say, how can we stop or rather let uh, reduce? How can we reduce? Um, being victims of stop hands we'll discuss in the other in the other slide then volatility indices there have also this tendency of moving in wages rising wages falling wages yeah so i'm sure you, most of you guys know about rising wages and uh, falling wages yeah so rising wages these are bullish or rather bearish vessel patterns that are effective when spotted correctly price is still in an uptrend that's one thing that you need to know price is still in an uptrend but squeezed towards one spot structure of the market is intact there is no uh, higher law that has been broken so whenever you spot a rising wage don't automatically assume that it's gonna fall or maybe it's already falling because structure is still intact so most of the times you find that like you, like you have seen, price is mostly squeezed towards one spot. And you see that most of the times it's squeezed towards a level of resistance or supply or, yeah, something like that, supply or resistance. Then in the case of a falling wage, it's mostly squeezed towards a level of support or demand. So let's say here, I don't know what was happening this other side, but I'm sure there's a level somewhere here. You can see here, price was moving like this this is a high this is a high this is a high this is a high like i said price or rather the structure of the market is still intact there's nothing that has been broken see there's a high there there's a high there there's a high there there's a high there you can see here there's a low there there's a low there you see here there's a low price when it reached here now those who are aggressive enters they would have entered at this point here but if you are consecutive you're going to wait for price to 
break this uh, wedge and enter on this because you have seen that structure has changed. This is a this was the last uh, higher low, and you can see price dropped at this point here, breaking this structure, uh, signifying that there is a possibility that price may go down. And you, you can see here how price reacted, price action, rejections, 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 and price went down, just like that. Very simple, guys, and easy. Then now uh, you can see, see, you can see uh, there's a there's a falling wedge here. You can see here how price was moving, how price was moving towards one spot. How price was moving towards one spot. You can see here, structure was still intact. Structure was still intact. Structure was still intact. And you can see here what happened after the wedge was broken. See what happened. Structure changed. Yeah, just like that. Structure changed. So, all of these come back to the point of the importance of structure. So now I'm going to talk about manipulation. So manipulation, like I showed you in the previous slide where I was talking about the importance of drawing zones. So as the name states, stop hunt or manipulation is the running of stops to take out liquidity below or above an area of interest. So stop hunt is very common on trading synthetic indices. It is very important for a trader to be patient while trading these indices to avoid stop out. Yeah, because you can get stopped out easily. Like you saw how price would push at a specific level and get back to the air. So I'll show you some examples of manipulation. You can see here how price was being manipulated around the air. You can see how price was being manipulated, see? See how price was being manipulated around this area. There are spikes, liquidity spikes in this area. You see, at this point here, this was our area of resistance, or rather support. We drew this line. You see what happened? There was a spike here, and price came. This one actually closed even below the line. You see what happened? The next thing, what happens next? Price goes to the upside. Very important, guys. You need to have patience when trading these things. So uh, then, let's see, the, the other point, this is another, this is another, um, this is another example of manipulation, see? Price actually went down there and came back to this point. Then, let's see, um, then this point here, and at this point here, um, you can see this was our area of support. Look at how price was being manipulated around this area. Let's look at look at how price was being manipulated in these areas. So it's very important if you had drawn a zone in this area, you would have seen that this was going to be um, very presentable. So <clears throat> again here, again here, okay, sorry for that. Let me just uh, go back to that slide. Let me go back to that slide. Um, let's see. Let me go back to that slide.
that. Sorry for that. There was an inter interruption. Yeah. So, yeah, like I was saying, that manipulation, as you can see here, as you can see here uh, in these areas, the price really spikes in these areas. You see here, all those examples that I was showing you, look at how price spikes in these areas. The same here, if you do it from there, you can clearly see here. You see here how price spikes in these areas, taking out liquidity. So it's very important for uh, you guys not to fall for such kind of tricks. Yeah, so then ways to stop, ways to stop uh, stop hunt or rather to prevent. We are all victims of stop hunt. There are certain times where it's something that you can just run away from. We're all victims. So you can minimize um, the risk of being stopped out by one, draw zones, like I said, draw zones correct, so that you don't get stopped out. Then two, be patient, guys, be patient. The reason why I'm saying be, to be patient is, as you can see, it leads to the point number three, always wait for candle closes. Always wait for, for candle closes, because let's say here, you see what happened? There are people who, who would have bought at this point here because it has broken out, or rather they would have entered here thinking that it's a retest. But as long as price has come back into this range, just know that there's a possibility that it's going to continue going down. If you see almost all of the examples here, if you, let's give an example here, the way it broke this point here. Most people would have sold at this point or sold at this point for thinking that price is going to retest then going go to the downside. But as you can see, always wait for candle closes. Once price comes back into this range, that's not that it will fake out. And one thing that you need to know is that there are more fake outs in the market than actual breakouts in the market. There are more fake outs. So in order for you to observe a nice breakout, you need to at least have price to move at least decisively away from the point where price was resisting to cross or where there was support. You can see here, you would have entered here on this retest. Maybe your first target was going to be here because price broke this point decisively, not just one candle or two, then came back to the range. No. And it's advisable that you enter on retest, provided that price didn't enter in a retest within this range. Enter when price retest this area where price was resisting to go above. Okay, so to add another confluence to the trade is we have exponential moving averages. So you can add these two types of exponential moving averages to your trading. Though I would encourage people to focus more on naked price action, the problem is that if you give people indicators or rather um, systems or something that can aid them to analyze, they tend to change their focus from, instead of focusing on a naked price uh, action chart, they start looking at the indicator. The very most important thing, or rather that I'll, share, that I'll say is that uh, the leading indicator is price itself. Never focus more on, a, uh, on an indicator, guys. There are some indicators, yes, that are very good, but price itself is a leading indicator. That's the thing that I would tell you. So, but this 20 and eight exponential moving average can help you to, you know, add more confidence to your trade. So let's give an example. Let's say the 20 MA measures always the price for the past 20 days. It can help us by acting as dynamic support and resistance. When it's above price, we're in a downtrend. If this, the 20 exponential moving average is above price, it's moving above price. In most cases, we're mostly in a downtrend. But if it's moving uh, below price, we're mostly in a downtrend. So these, this 20 uh, exponential moving average is mostly for uh, us day traders. We have seen that uh, there are more day traders than swing traders or 
position traders in these groups. So for those who are long-term traders, you might consider using the 50, 100, and 200 moving average. So we have the eight exponential moving average. This one moves closer to, to price. This gives us an idea of what can happen in a short term. Okay, so in our example that I'm going to show you here, the 20 exponential moving average is in the black color. Okay, then the eight exponential moving average is in upper color. So you can see, be attentive as well. Like be attentive on the crosses when the EMAs cross. You can see here, we're in a downtrend. Huh? You can see here when price crossed this point here, you would have made an entry there. You see, when price crossed at that point, you would have entered the trade there. You would have gotten all these pips. Like I said, the 20 exponential moving average when it's above price, like you see here, it's our area of, not really our area, but we're in a downtrend. You can see it can act as uh, a dynamic resistance. See here what happened, price kept, bounced, went, then here again, there was a fake out, more like a fake out, then came back below. It's the same thing here. We're in a downtrend, downtrend, then a fake out, then price continued to the downside. Same thing here. Look at what happened when price crossed here. When price crossed here, this 20 moving average was below price. And you see how it was acting as dynamic support. Price was busy bouncing on these areas. Always confirm with price action. You can see here, look at the crosses. The cross there, you see here, you see there, there's a cross. Look at what happened, how it started acting as dynamic resistance, just like that. See, same thing. There it crossed, there it crossed. Look at how price has been reacting on these areas and look at the price action that has been reacting on these areas here. I want you to be observing the candlestick patterns that are in these areas of potential dynamic uh, support and resistance. Very important. You see, this is an example of, of some trades, like some examples of trades that you can take. You see, you draw a trend line first. Here now we're trying to put everything together that you have learned. You put your trend line here. You see what happens? There's a demand there. It, it holds, it goes up. Then here, there's a level of demand, you see, goes up. Then what happens next? Price has broken this level of demand, one. And two, price has broken this trend line. See what happens. You could have entered here and exited at this point, but you know that there's an area of demand which was created here at this trend line. You could have exited there, but you know, or rather you have kept in mind that there's a possibility that the market has changed trend because the trend line has been broken, a level of demand has been broken. So what happens next? You went, you went for a retest. You see, you could have entered here on the retest of this uh, trend line. Above, you can see that there's a level of supply. So as I'm telling you guys that put everything together when you are trading this. Pay much attention to the details of the chart. The charts always tell the story of what's going to happen next. See here an example. An example here, there's a reason why I drew this line here, this black line here. You can see, um, you can see here, this line here, it was a level of resistance. You see price was failing to break here. It created a level of resistance, then it broke at this point. So here it formed support. So if you're not aware of zones below this area, you could have bought at, at this point, you could have bought at this point here, you would have been in profit a bit, but look at what happened. There was a stop hand here. You would have been stopped out because the stop loss is gonna be below this because you didn't know that there is a zone. So that's how I'm telling you that, that's how I was telling you the importance of drawing both the zone and the line. 
which is the support and the resistance. Draw them so that at least you know exactly where price can be manipulated at, so that you don't fall victim of um, stop hand. You see here, descending channel or rather a, a bull flag, which is a continuation pattern. You see what happens. You would have entered at this point here instead of like being subjective that if price touches this if price touches this this part three times and have to buy and hold look at what happened if you would have bought at this point and held you have been in profit yes but you would have been stopped out here but if you added your confluence that okay since there is a zone here so meaning if i buy in between this area these are equal laws which means that there is there is liquidity down there. So meaning there's a possibility that the big guys are gonna run to grab liquidity below this below these points here. As you can see, what happened next price dropped. Would have been stopped out, or maybe your sell stop was gonna be activated. Then your stop loss was gonna be hit when price came back here. So it's very important to draw these guys. Yeah. Then, <clears throat> yeah, so very, very important points that you need to know. You can see here, those who trade head and shoulder, you can clearly see here, this is our neckline, which is the trend line. You see what happened? Like I told you, connect two points, always connect two points. Look at what happened when price broke, broke this point, you would have entered on this retest. Instead of you waiting for, instead of you waiting for a, instead of you waiting for a retest to this far end, you can see that there was a level of supply here, a zone which was created, you would have entered at this point here. Easy as that, you would have entered at that point there instead of you waiting for price to reach there, because you can see that here, price changed structure. You can see here, price changed structure. So meaning we're gonna have a low at this point, then a high there, then you start going just like that. So, uh, very important things, very important things to note. Then, um, So you can see here, there's another one, trend line, like I showed you, you only need two points first, two points to connect. You only need two points to connect. You can see here, here, then what happened next? Like I told you, high or oh, low, high, low was supposed to create a high that is higher than that point but you see what happened there was a failure of creating a new high then we break this trend line after breaking this trend line you see what happened next we created a low that is lower than this point so you see what happened if you didn't enter at this point you could have entered that this retest here the retest of this law here which was our level of support now it became resistance Simple as that. Simple as that. Don't complicate trading. Then this other point, so that trade, you can see here, you can see here, uh, you can see here is, well, some structure here, though not that clear, there's some structure there. And what happened next? Price failed to create a new a new law. It started creating higher lows. See, then what happened next? It created a higher high, higher than this. So signifies that price might change direction. See what happened next? Price started correcting. Most of people would have been thinking that no, we've changed uh, direction now uh, in the downtrend, but and clearly I see here that we're from a downtrend, price change structure, this could potentially be a bull flag, which is a continuation pattern. And where do we sell, where do we buy from? There's an area of demand here. 
wait for price to to your look to your levels always wait for price don't chase price otherwise you're gonna find yourself uh, beating about the bush in the markets then <clears throat> we have an example of the rising wedge yeah you see here is a rising wedge you can see there's a rising wedge price is in a downtrend most people would have started buying without knowing exactly that we're still in the seller's market we've started buying but you you can first spot the area of of um of supply here price here is quite right this is an area of supply all this all this point here guys if you see nicely price started from this point here to this point this is this was our lower high and this one was our mm, our lower low anything that is in between here we're still in the seller's market because the structure hasn't been broken yet as you can see quite right yes we would have been having these points here this series here but we know that all this is happening in a seller's territory and there's an area of supply here you can see here would have entered here if you are if an aggressive type of end uh, trader would have entered at this point here if you are consecutive you would have entered maybe at the break of this point here because you can see price broke this uh wedge then up other than that there was also a cross of the ema you see what happened now, all this is confluence you would have entered and you would have gotten some pips now, so so i think uh, i think we have come to the end of the presentation yeah i think that's all that i had for you guys today i hope hope you have enjoyed the session if you haven't i uh, please let me know now so i hope everyone has gotten something from today's uh, lesson i hope you will implement these in your training